Gary Goes Green, and I'm not just talking about the t-shirt I'm wearing for this video. I've had my own solar PV installation done at my own property. And in this video, we're gonna see all the aspects of that installation. And beyond this door here, houses my SunSync inverter and battery. So make sure you stay tuned to find out which unusual room in the house I had it installed in, and which piece of equipment lurks beyond this door that I was adamant I wasn't gonna have. To make Sean Scanlon and Paul's life a lot easier before they come, I actually wired the installation for them with my great mate, Marker. So we took from the consumer unit a six millimeter squared twin and CPC cable, two green and yellow six millimeter squared conductors, as well as a category six cable from the consumer unit, which will be for my CT clamps and my router's just down here. I also took a category six cable down there for the internet connection. However, the SunSync one works on Wi-Fi, but I just thought why I'm wiring through the floors, which are web joists with very small hatches in order to pull those cables in. Remember the rule, the hardest cable to pull in is the one you forget. So I thought I'd just pull that in just in case in the future, I'd need a hardwired connection in that area. For what at the time I was presuming was my last cable, I bounced up onto the third floor. And that reminds me, I forgot to mention to Sean on the phone that I was a three story house before he come to do the installation work. I thought it'd be a nice surprise when he arrived. Loft hatch above me, and we decided to take our cables, which are strings, with a new form of cable. We selected the Doncaster PV Ultra cable. Now that comes in two and four core, and it also comes in four and six mil. For my installation, I selected the six millimeter squared two core version. That cable went from the roof space all the way down to my sun sink inverter. Thinking I'd fully wired my installation, I say goodbye to Mark as I sit down at night knowing full well I've done all the hard work for Sean and Paul. However, a couple of days later, it dawned on me the area in which my sun sink inverter and battery can be installed has no smoke detector. So there's one more cable to pull in and this time the wife had to help me in order to get it into the location. The next thing we needed was a scaffold tower. I went off to work and two scantily dressed gentlemen turned up to install this all the way up to our guttering height. Sean rang me and he said, I think I should come down and have a look at the size of this roof and work out how many panels we can have on it. This is nice. I might just need you to uh, hold I'll be the on end. the other end, shall hold I? We're measuring. <laughs> Thank you very much. Called the end of the tape. So how far do you want me to go along? Uh, up to the flashing. Yeah, I'm there on the right flashing. Right by those uh, wasps. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, we've got a wasp nest there. It might go up your shorts. <laughs> yeah, one up your shorts. Uh, <laughs> Three. <laughs> great start, isn't it? So we're trying to measure the size. What's the pitch of the roof? 40 degrees. Okay, that's one of your favourite numbers. You hate those flat roofs, nice don't you? Nice one. It's really good on the knees. <laughs> But as we'll, uh, as we'll find out in a couple of weeks. Yeah, we're trying to find the area, aren't we? Yeah. Once we know the area, we can know the panel size. We can work out how many we can get on there, yeah? That's it. And obviously allowing for our uh, gaps, which we have to leave a certain amount from the ridge and obviously from the sides as well. Okay, so if we look at the next doors one then. So the, the gaps that are on the left, I know we can't see the right. So they're purposely left gaps, aren't they? Yep. It's a little bit close on the top. Ideally, that should be down a little bit because you've got to think about lift. Not Obviously, so that's through wind, yes? From the wind, yes. okay. which is why we bring them in slightly. It's normally between five and 600 mil, all the way around. Okay, and when the wind catches it, obviously it's got to hold on to the roof, hasn't it? Yeah. Otherwise we're in a little bit of trouble. And if it's not fixed down properly, then potentially, or so, if your panels so, hasn't been tightened up or hasn't been talked up, then potentially the panel would lift um, and then you'll find it either in your garden, possibly buried in one of the cars in the car park, or if someone's walking around, it could be potentially dangerous. So, um, so. so can we say we're going for the inch and a half tens then, are we for the brackets? Is that what we're saying? We're going full on, we're not going in jates. <laughs> Big ones. <laughs> <laughs> Use that as, a, as a, effectively a foot position now to try and get this tape measure. We're slightly less windy now, which is handy. Yeah, as soon as you get the tape out, it likes to bend. And uh, it's a nice picture you sent me. I actually thought the picture of this was a little bit shallower. <laughs> so, turn up today. Fairly steep a nice pitch. surprise, then. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Nice surprise. Oh, it's going like a dream. 4.1. So, nice little picture. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Oh, it's a lot flatter on there than it is in real life, I feel like. When Sean had completed his calculation, he offered us some crushing news to me, telling me I could only get six panels on my roof, when I'd presumed looking at my next door neighbour's house that I'd actually be able to get eight. However, because they're the old blue and silver type, they only have an output of roughly 250 watts per panel, and my new Q-cell ones are slightly larger in size, but they've upped the output now to a fraction over 400 watts a panel, meaning my solar array can get about 2.4 kilowatts compared to my next door neighbour's, which is considerably less for more panels. Time to see inside my plant room. I've had a few modifications done to it recently. I've installed a toilet and a basin, making it a multi-purpose room. Just gonna go through the kit I've got installed in here. I'm sure people will notice the end of the trunking has no end cap. I've still got to order that one. 
Let's first of all start with the isolator for the AC here. So we've got a cable coming from our consumer unit feeding obviously this room, but remember that cable also works in reverse. It takes the AC energy back to my consumer unit so I can power it either off the solar, solar and battery. Next to it is the first piece of kit that I didn't want to be installed. It's my kilowatt hour meter if I generate enough electricity that I've exceeded the amount that I've used in the house or in the battery, I can obviously export it. I didn't want one of these, however, Sean said under the MCS agreement, his paperwork requires the code that I've blanked out here on it in order that he can register this job under MCS. So I had to have one of those. Now I've got my sun sink inverter. This is where all the magic happens. So obviously we're taking our DC off the roof and we're either diverting into the battery, converting into AC and then for sending it out into the house. This is a 3.6 kilowatt inverter. And if you remember from earlier on, my array on the roof is 2.4 kilowatts. So you can see there we've got a nice LCD touch screen as well. So at the minute we've got a battery with 23% actually inside of the battery itself. If we look to this side here, we've got another isolator that wasn't gonna have. This is my DC isolator. So the strings that come off the roof come through this isolator here. However, the strings that we've got here, we could have not gone through the isolator, so I didn't have to have one. And I could have isolated them by taking them out of here in order to do so. There is a switch just above here. So this is also a power switch on the side of the inverter. But remember that the actual strings themselves below will always be live. And these connectors, when pulled out, are actually touch proof. So again, you wouldn't be able to touch them. I didn't want this isolator, but Sean convinced me to have it. The reason he convinced me to have it is it goes from obviously the strings from the isolator into my DC surge. So I've got a surge arrest here on the DC side before then going into the inverter itself. Underneath it, I've got the ability to pull this open and there's two fuses in here because this is the fuses for the DC side. So the cables underneath which are identified red and black through these glands for positive and negative. These cables go into my battery. My battery is 5.2 kilowatt hours and it'd be interesting to see over time if I should have had another battery. And if I did, I will install another one. So we're gonna see through this series of videos whether one battery would be enough. Now there is times when I'm gonna be out of work and this battery will be full. So therefore we can re-divert the energy and send it into the hot water tank, making the hot water tank effectively also a battery for that excess energy. Because I don't really wanna send it out to the actual grid itself, because if I send it out to the grid, I can get a small payment for it. But imagine I come back at night and I'm heavily loaded and all of a sudden there is no sunlight, the battery is empty. I'm obviously gonna have to buy my energy in. Now, if I sold it in the day, say at 10 pence, and then buy it in at night, say at 40 pence, that's not a wise thing to do. So I'll see if I can re-divert my energy perhaps into the hot water tank and consider that second battery over here as well. However, if you want to catch up with the next one in the series, when we see how it's like living with obviously a battery solar array, the Sunsync one I've installed here, check out the video on screen there. However, if you're a little bit early and haven't made that video, we'll replace it with either Sean's MC4 connector or the PV Ultra from Doncaster cables. But you've got to go now because I need to use the toilet.